God bless you, wonderful people. Obviously, Jesus is in this place. He is here. And because he is here, there isn't any problem here that is greater than he is. God can do anything at any time he wants to. So in this meeting this year, whatever you feel to do, at any time you feel to do it, I give you license to do it. Just do it. Because God is looking in this hour for people who will simply be obedient to his voice, to his touch. I know that you have been standing and now you've been seated, but would you, be, would you stand again kindly for the reading of the word of the Lord? I read this passage of scripture for you last year, but I want to read it again. In the book of Exodus, chapter 23, there's a very powerful statement made by God to Moses. In Exodus 23 and verse 20, here is what is said. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Look at this, beware of him. It's an admonition. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Emirates, the Hittites, the Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Then if you go into the book of Hebrews, <clears throat> it's very interesting if you read most of chapter 1. But going down to verse 7, it says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7, And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, everyone say spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. Now go to verse 13 of chapter 1. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on thy right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they... They refers back to the noun angels. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Then if you look in Hebrews, the last chapter in verse 2, I'll just quote it. It says, be not forgetful to entertain angels, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. I want to entitle this, Just I'll just call it a higher deliverance, because I feel we need a higher deliverance. Would you lift your hands, your voices in your hearts, and would you pray for revelation, understanding to come upon you here tonight, <clears throat> like never before, just to ask God in your own way to absolutely give you revelation, understanding, like you've never had it before. Jesus, I pray by the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, bind us together in one mind and one accord. Anoint us to hear, to speak, to understand. Let there be revelation, understanding. Oh God, that will course through our minds, our very souls, our very being. Help us to enter into the realm of the supernatural. Lift us above the deliverance we've already experienced into a higher level of operation, understanding, and demonstration. We will not fail to give you praise, glory, and honor. We ask these things in the matchless, resplendent, all-powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. 
thank you again for standing. Would you clap your hands as you are seated and would you just let your voice out and would you just again praise him. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Triumph in this house. Victory in this house. Deliverance in this house. Those things, you may be seated, those things which I'm about to say, of all the people I preach to in the world, and mostly, I suppose, in the United States, but of all the people I do preach to, I think you people here are probably in one of the best places to receive what I'm about to say here tonight. Our esteemed brethren from other nations, brother and sister Gleason, Bishop, Willoughby, Pastor Timothy, and all the rest of you, you people are special. And I've always known it for the first time, from the first time I came here. And the brother and sister Dabs and their lovely family. I've always known that you were special, and there's no doubt in my mind, but what you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Pastor Timothy and his family, you people, Look at your neighbor and say to them, whoever they are, you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I can feel faith in this place when you say that. I can feel it. Look back at that same person and say, then, let's go to the heights of this thing. For there is no telling what God will do if we scale the heights of his spirit and power. I am a very blessed individual in that I believe in Jesus. I am a Bible believer. I believe, know that these signs follow them that believe. In my lifetime, in my ministry, I've seen incredible things happen at the hands of God, at the power of His Spirit, His demonstration, and angels moving among the crowd. Great demonstrations. For example, I was in a meeting where a boy's faith was so high. There must have been about 10,000 people in the audience, but this boy's faith was so high. He came running down the aisle, had hearing aids in both ears. He was deaf. He yanked the hearing aids out of his ears, fell on the floor in a trance, came out of it speaking with tongues, and both ears were opened. And I never touched him. You see, traditionally, we feel like we have to have someone lay hands on us. Traditionally, we want someone to call us out. And it goes on and on. We have our own traditions. We have healing lines. They're not even the Bible. But God has used those things that we do. But what I'm saying to you, just as easily as you can feel him, right there where you are seated, you can be healed just like that. Just like that, right where you're seated. God can just suddenly come to you, and you can be miraculously healed. You don't need me or anybody else. God is in this place. He is in here. When you came through those doors, you exposed yourself to the most powerful radiation known on planet Earth because the rays of the Holy Ghost can shine right through your clothes, burn out cancer cells, take away all kinds of diseases. You're in the presence of the Almighty God, the Creator of the universe. You are in the presence of this man called Jesus. Jesus is in this house. Jesus is in this house. You can feel him. And just as easy as you feel him, you can be miraculously healed, touched by the power and the presence of Almighty God. I've been in meetings where people just leaped out of wheelchairs and began to run because the power of God was so great. I, was, uh, <clears throat> I came out of a conference and it was, it was in Louisiana. There must have been about ten or 12,000 people there on the campgrounds. And I w worked in the altar until I was just, uh, I was exhausted. And there was, it was just, I'd been in there a long time. When I finally went out of that tabernacle, 
into the parking lot. There were people out on the parking lot dancing and shouting on the asphalt. It was unbelievable. There were people lying on the parking lot in between the cars, trembling and shaking and speaking with tongues. It wasn't just in the tabernacle. It came outside the tabernacle. They were drunk on the Spirit of God. In other words, what I'm trying to say here this year is there's more to all of this than even we've had a hold of. There's more to this. We have not even scratched the surface of what we really have a hold of in God. We've settled for less when we could have so much more. But you've got to believe it. There's got to be a hunger in you to reach for it. You've got to want something more than just the traditional presentation. There is something greater that God is trying to do for us because before Jesus comes in the rapture, we're, in, we're entering into the latter rain right now. The latter rain is seven times greater than the former rain. So anything you read in the book of Acts, it's going to be seven times greater than anything you read in there just before the coming of the Lord. There will be people cut away just like Philip in the spirit. You may be some of those people. There will be miracle signs and wonders that will that transform anything this world has to know because there's something beyond the human reasoning, intellect, and understanding. It is the demonstration of the Spirit of God and power. How many of you want that realm? You want to get into that particular realm. How many of you are reaching a place? I'm not, I didn't say reached, but you're reaching a place where there's something in you that just pulling, pushing to get more involved than you've ever been before. I'm there. I'm not happy with where I am. There's something more. No matter how much I've seen, there's more that I can have. There's more that I can get involved with, and I want to get into it. God's going to use somebody before this thing is over. It might as well be you, and it might as well be me. Why not? Why don't we just get involved with this and make it happen? And God's never had a perfect vessel to use. He's only had to use what was available. I am available. I'm not perfect, but I am available. We're not perfect, but we are available. So God will use us because we are available. A lot of people who have got so much together and could do more than I have done, they were not available. God has always used what was available. I am available, and I want to see it. Somebody's going to do it. It might as well be me. Peter was not perfect. Paul was not perfect. Look through their lives. But God, use them. Lift your hands for a moment in your way of doing things. Ask God to just absolutely take your sins away, just to forgive you, to wash everything out. Jesus, we died daily. God, forgive us for our sins, our transgressions. Forgive us for the sins of our mind, the sins of our heart, the sins of our flesh, the sins of our body, for presumptuous sins, ignorant sins, willful sins, whatever. God, forgive us and wash us clean. It is written, you are faithful to forgive us if we will confess and cry out to you. That's it. Don't worry what your neighbor thinks. Don't worry what your neighbor hears. Just for the moment, pour out your heart to God. That's it. Let, let your voice out. Let your voice out in the name of Jesus by the presence and power of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You can feel something building. You can feel something moving because God responds to repentance. He responds to a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. He does not despise. Mm. Now, you're in the best place you've been in thus far in this service to do exactly what God wants you to do at any time he wants you to do it. If you feel like getting up and going and praying for somebody climbing over a seat, do it. Do it. I can carry on tomorrow night. We don't have to finish any kind of a program here. We've just come to touch him, to reach him, to hear from him, to get a hold of God. Mm. It 
It's a beautiful sound, a wonderful sound. The human voices crying to a creator, people lifting their voices, the sound of weeping, the sound of victory, the sound of positiveness in human voices toward God. It lifts you into a level, a realm of the supernatural that is unknown to this world. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. <clears throat> there are people here tonight before me in this auditorium. You will be used miraculously by God before the coming of the Lord. That thing is beginning to build in you. I can feel it. There are people here right now. There are young men and women that are getting involved with the gifts of healing and the working of miracles. That thing is upon you. You can feel it in the air. You can feel it in the air in this auditorium. It's coming upon you because you young people have chosen to serve God. You've chosen to worship, to dance, to shout. You're unashamed of Him, and God is going to reward you openly. Your gift will be seen by the world, by your family, by the community, by the nation in which you live. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everyone say, I receive it. I was asked, for example, to preach the last night of a Louisiana camp meeting this year. That's one of the biggest camp meetings in America. So I went just for the last night. I must have got about 10 minutes into the service, and the power of God fell. The gift of faith took over in that place. People were healed of all kinds of diseases. People got the Holy Ghost. All kinds of things happened. But there was, I got a phone call about two days after I got home from that meeting. There was a diabetic, a man who had sugar diabetes, had had it for years. He took two shots of insulin a day. He is now totally insulin free. The Holy Ghost just healed him in that meeting just like that. Because where Jesus is, anything can happen. Anything can happen. How many of you want something miraculous to happen to you tonight? You want it. Then you'll have it. Because God wants you to have it. He wants you to have it. Mm. I am interested, like never before, in breaking the spirit world wherever I go. The real world, this is not the real world. This carpet is not the real world. This is not the real world. The real world is the spirit world. And if you don't learn to negotiate that spirit world, you will be just destroyed because there is a spirit world that constantly wars against us all the time. You can feel it. Every nation has a different demonic force over it in power. Even in America, all the states we have, you cross one state line into another state, there's a different devil, a different prince that controls that area. You can feel them. There are different spirits, different princes over the cities. When I came in this area tonight, I said, I enter this area in Jesus' name. That puts all the forces of hell on alert that we are here and greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. There is no devil nor combination of devils greater than what is inside of us. And the name of Jesus routes them out. Everyone just say Jesus. Jesus. Lift your hands and shout it for a moment. Jesus. Jesus. Oh. The first part of May this year, I went to Vienna, Austria. I'd never been there before. I am half English and half German. I have a burden for Asia. 
I don't particularly have a burden for Europe. You would think I would because I'm half English and half German, but I don't. I can go there and preach, and I'm glad to help. But my real burden is for this part of the world. So I went. When the plane landed in Vienna, I lifted my hands and I said, I take dominion power over the prince of this entire area in Jesus' name. And I can do that because I have the power to do it. See, we know these things, but we don't exercise them. It's sort of out there someplace, but we got to get it from out there in here and then stand up and command it because that's when it happens. The devil is more afraid of you than you can possibly imagine. He, do, he has watched this church for nearly 2,000 years now. He knows, he, he can't do anything about it anyway, but he's learned to tolerate our worship. He can't do anything about it anyway. He doesn't mind if you stand there or seated there crying and praying for someone over here. He doesn't, he's, he's used to seeing that. But what tears him to pieces is, when you suddenly stand to your feet or begin to walk to someone and begin to reach your hand toward them, he trembles and fears because he believes that book more than we do. He knows these signs shall follow them that believe. He knows something is about to happen that is out of control and he has no control over it because when you lay hands on someone and pray in Jesus' name, something is supposed to happen and he can't control that. That's where we've got to get to like never before is to get into the demonstration of the Spirit of God and power and let what's inside of us out. Mm. Say, I've got that inside of me. Say, I have that power inside of me. And you do. Mm. In that meeting... I didn't really preach. I went there to transmit revelatory, insightful truths from the Bible. So I got up and just began to talk to them, much like I'm talking to you here tonight. It was amazing the things that happened. They came from Germany. They were there from Norway. They were there from Austria, all over Europe. And the Spirit of God began to move in that in that place. They have young people that are on fire for God. And as they worshiped, I saw a vision. The hands of God began to tear a hole in the canopy of darkness over that area. And he kept tearing that hole. The more they worshiped, the greater that hole became until all of a sudden, God performed miracles right before our eyes. People stood and were healed while other people watched. One woman's back just straightened. She was just miraculously healed while people were watching. They lay on the floor, sometimes for an hour in fetal position. Those pastors, those missionaries, worshiping and crying. I think just in those two services, 26 people got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There were all kinds of things that happened because people began to unleash what was inside of them. Now, <clears throat> I'm a human being. I've been in the ministry. I've had the Holy Ghost about 46 years. I've probably been preaching about 40, 43, something like that. And uh, I've seen all kinds of things happen through the years. But I want to repeat myself. There is a realm of the spirit that we've never really gotten into. We talk about angels, but we relegate them to just paintings of creatures with long white wings. But angels are ministering spirits for those who would be heirs of salvation. Angels are ministering spirits. What do you do if you minister to someone? 
you go to them, you transmit, you help, you minister to them, you lay hands on them. The Bible says that angels are ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. People, there is something around us. There is a spiritual world around us that we've never, ever really got involved with. But it's trying to get involved with us. I'm aware of things like I've never been aware of things before. Something has come to this meeting. Something wants to lift you to a level you've never been in before. But you can feel a resistance. There's something that doesn't want you to get there. But I have determined I am going to get there. I am going to have it. I will have it. I will touch it. It will get a hold of me. Throw your hands in the air for a moment and just let your voice out and praise him. That's it. Italavra kashata rakashaya. He and the lavraha shator of rakashataya. On that of rakashataya. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You can feel something moving. You can feel something beginning to rise. There's something beginning to rise among us in this place because there's a unity. There are angels in this house where two or three are gathered together in my name. There he is in the midst of them. Angels. Jesus is here. Angels are in this place. And when angels are present, you can feel power. You can feel holiness. And there is a power. There is a holiness in this place tonight. Oh, I have a friend in Chicago, Illinois. His name is Rick Gonzalez. He works with people from the street, some of the most undesirable people, people who are, are murderers, people who have killed others. He's rescued them. The police knows what he's doing. He and his wife go down in those areas, and they walk among those people, and they pass out tracts, and they witness to them, and they're converting them. I've seen ex-gang leaders that normally would shoot each other in the streets in Chicago, in America. I've watched those men in a move of God in the altar service come and embrace each other and cry and speak speak with tongues on each other's shoulders. Normally they'd be gunning for each other on the streets, but in the presence of Jesus, they are crying and speaking with tongues on each other's shoulders. Oh, what a savior. Oh, what a savior. People, you want a miracle. You've got the greatest miracle that's ever existed. How many of you have ever spoken with tongues? A language you never learned. That is one of the greatest miracles that can ever happen to a human being. We think about people getting out of wheelchairs, and that's a miracle. Or people throwing down crutches, or legs growing. Those are miracles. But every time you speak with tongues, it's a miracle from God. It is a miracle from God. You've already got a miracle. You've got a miracle inside of you. What God wants us to do is stir up that miracle. Stir up that miracle. Stir up that miracle. Stir that thing and let it out and let it move through you. Try it for just a moment. We have time. This is only the first night. We have time. Just lift your hands in the presence of God. Let the Holy Ghost speak through you. You've got a miracle right there. The Spirit knoweth how to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. In April of this year, Sunday, April 19th, I was preaching in Chicago, Illinois, and the Holy Ghost directed me to preach to them and talk to them about angels. It was on a Sunday afternoon, a Sunday afternoon service. And while I was teaching and preaching on the power of angels and the ministry of angels, all of a sudden, <clears throat> Brother Gonzalez just grabbed a mic like this and made a prophecy, a declaration. He has a man in his church whose name is Nick. And Nick is a Romanian individual. But Nick's wife was incurably insane in a mental institute, and there was nothing they could do for her. She was locked in a cell. So while I was preaching on angels, Nick, 
all of a sudden, Brother Gonzalez grabbed that mic, and pe a lot of people were standing. They were standing worshiping, and Nick was standing at the back over here. He said, Nick, God has just sent an angel. I can see him. That angel is standing near you. God has just sent that angel to the hospital to minister to your wife in the cell. Unknown to us, 10 seconds before Brother Gonzalez made that declaration, Nick, having faith and believing in the ministry of angels, had thrown his hands in the air and he said, Jesus, send an angel to my wife. 10 seconds before Brother Gonzalez picked up that mic, that angel went to that hospital. That was Sunday afternoon, about 4 o'clock. Monday morning, the hospital called Nick and said, We can't figure this out, but your wife is in her right mind. <laughs> totally healed. They said, we're releasing her at 4 o'clock this afternoon. She was released from the hospital with her walking papers, and she is still in her right mind. This is an area we've never got involved with, but God is trying to get us involved with this. So every once in a while, I will call Brother Gonzalez, and I will say, how is Miriam? Because that's the, that's the woman's name. I said, how is Miriam, Miriam doing? He said, Brother Stone King, she's doing tremendous. Well, about... Two or three months after all of that, I called Brother Gonzalez. I said, how is Miriam doing? He said, oh, Brother Stone King, she was killed outright in a car accident. I said, no, no, no. He said, wait, wait, that's not the end of the story. I said, what do you mean? He said, Brother Stone King, a van went through an intersection without stopping and demolished her car. In fact, the car was so torn to pieces that they had to get what they call jaws of death. It's some kind of a, of a machine that comes to cut the car away from her dead body. When they called Nick, the husband, and told him she was dead, he raised his hands like that, and that same warmth he had felt from that angel in the service weeks and weeks before on Sunday, he felt that warmth, and he said, Jesus, send that angel. That angel went to that dead woman and raised her from the dead. She's alive and well right now. She was totally dead, killed outright in that car accident. People, there's a realm. God, I'm telling you, I want to get involved with all of this. I don't care what people say. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what religion says. I don't care what anybody says. If I can find it in that book, this boy's going to get into it. I'm going to get involved because I want to see. I don't want to just hear about it. I want to see these things and they are upon us and I can feel faith building right now in this place let your voice out again and just let your that's it that's it let your voice out hallelujah Jesus can you feel something coming upon you can you feel something coming upon you there is something coming upon you my heart's desire is for every one of you men that has come here that you will leave here and go back to your nation with something you've never ever had before that the anointing of God the power of God the demonstration will be upon you like you've never known before because I reiterate somebody's going to do it it might as well be you it might as well be me it might as well be us and the next great revival will come from this part of the world and you have come to the kingdom from such a time as this so in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus receive it that's it that's it clap your hands again all ye people and just shout with the voice of acceptance to the Lord for what he's doing. Mm. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. That's it. There's a lingering reaching for the Lord. Continue to reach. Just continue to reach. Hallelujah, Jesus. God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, I pray, angels of the Lord, to be among us in this place. Help us to feel the brush of angels' wings, the touch of the master's hand. Jesus, I pray tonight in this place, we open our minds, we open our hearts, we open our very souls, our wills, O oh God. To the realm of the miraculous. In other words, we've got to preach these things. Because that's how you get it. You, you get what you preach. The reason we get people to repent is we preach repentance. The reason people get baptized in Jesus' name is we preach baptism in Jesus' name. The reason we get people to speak with tongues when they receive the Holy Ghost, when they're filled with the Holy Ghost, is because we preach the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you preach miracles of healing, you will get miracles of healing. If you preach the realm of the supernatural beyond just the traditional, you will get the realm of the supernatural. You get what you preach. Mm. I was doing a session like this in Brother Black's church this past summer. There w the place was packed with people. In the balcony, there were some people visiting from England. One of the women fell down and was praying at the folding chair in the balcony. Her friend thought it would be nice just to take a picture of her and have it as a keepsake of her friend praying. So she snapped a picture of her friend praying. And people were worshipping and she just kept on worshipping. A couple minutes later she decided she'd look to see if the picture came out good because she'd take another one if it didn't. When she opened the camera, the camera caught what the human eye cannot see. There was an angel standing over her friend with a hand laid upon the shoulder. That woman became so excited, she came running down those stairs, showing that picture to every place, just tore up the service. Who cares if we tear up the service? As long as we get involved with what God is doing, who really cares? Well, when that happened, a man came running to me. He threw up on a computer, a laptop. He said, look at this, Brother Stone King, because we announced it, and people wanted to see the picture. So we looked at it. There was a, a, someone had taken a photograph across a large audience, and, in the, and it was in the altar service, at the end of the, of the service, and the gift of faith was obviously there. And in among those people, not in color, but in Snow White, there were figures like like human beings with their hands reached over praying for people all through that audience he said brother stone king what is this he said i said it's angels there's no doubt about it it's angels the camera can pick up what the human eye cannot see in brother kilgore's church years ago they had about 1200 people there in a service one night and during the end of the altar service people on this side had sort of sat down and they were weary but there were a lot of people over here with their hands still in the air worshiping god there were a few scattered through here and someone just went over here and took a photograph of the whole audience when that photograph came back it was incredible above the heads of every individual that had their hands in the air worshiping God, there were flames of fire in the air. Those that were just seated, not worshiping, there was nothing above them. But everyone that had their hands in the air, there were flames of fire above their head. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. If you could see what's here, if you could see what happens when you worship, if you could see what's going on, it would absolutely... It would absolutely set your soul on fire if you could see what happens when our people come together and worship. Try it for a moment. Just try it. Just try it. Mm. Jesus, I praise you, God. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yahoto Korisha Taka, Hotorovra Kashata Korisha Taka, Utalevra Kashata Ravra Kashaya. Alleluia, Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah, Jesus. There are angels in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uvra varreha shot of rekashata. Uvra varreha shot of rekashata. May you never be the same again. May you never be the same again. Jesus, grant it, I pray in the name of Jesus. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's upon you. It's upon you. Right there. Otara kore kajata. Hatara vra kajata ka. Otara vra kajata kajata. Otara vra vra kajata kajata. Hiatara vra kajata ka. Hiatara ka. It's upon you. It's upon you. In the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Otara kata kore kajata. Hiatara vra kajata. Jesus, Jesus, that we will never be the same, that we will never be the same, that we will never be the same, God, I pray. Our minds, our hearts, our emotions, our very souls, oh God, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. That's it, Ken. That's it. It's got a hold of you. That's it, Ken. It's got that's it right there. That's it. That's it. You're never gonna be the same boy. Never gonna be the same. Such as I have, such as I have in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's it. I command all pain to leave your body in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. 
That's it. Just do whatever you feel like doing. Angels have just been released to minister to you. Angels have just been released in this place to minister among us to the heirs of salvation. The anointing of the Holy Ghost, the boldness of God in the name of Jesus. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I think we ought to all stand tonight because if you will stand, suddenly there'll be a direction come upon you and you'll begin to move toward others. There's a ministry. There's a ministry upon believers here. There's a ministry in the hands of believers here tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That's it, that's it, in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. I encourage you to move out of your seat and get a hold of somebody. There's an anointing upon you as a believer. There is an anointing upon this entire audience. That's it, that's it, that's it. Transmit that, transmit it in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, I praise you, I praise you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Never to be the same. I cannot be the same again. I will not be the same again.
Wonderful what is happening, glorious what is happening among people as believers here tonight. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the gifts of the Spirit are upon you. Hallelujah! 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 The demonstration of His Spirit. Hallelujah! Never to be the same again. Never to be the same again. Never to be the same. 